Welcome to the GEMDS video training series. In this video, I'll demonstrate an application focus around the industrial Wi-Fi feature available in the Orbit platform. The internal Wi-Fi module has FCC modular approval and may only be used with one of the GEMDS approved antennas. The Wi-Fi antenna is connected to the reverse SMA connector on the unit's front panel. Only these antennas may be used. The Wi-Fi module can be configured to operate in 802.11 B, G, N, access point or station mode. The unit may also be set up as a dual Wi-Fi access point, broadcasting two SSIDs with each having their own network configurations. The first SSID should be reserved for high throughput data paths. The second SSID is intended to support auxiliary applications, such as a dedicated management connection or a guest LAN access. Be aware that the MCR organizes the SSIDs in alphabetical order. The first alphabetic entry will be the high throughput connection. The Wi-Fi operational mode can be configured through the user interface. The unit supports the Wi-Fi security modes of none, which should only be used to test connectivity. Also, WPA2 plus CCMP slash AES encryption, which should be used if all client devices support WPA2 CCMP. The final security mode supported is CCMP slash AES encryption plus TKIP encryption. This mode should be used if there is a mix of both legacy client devices that only support WPA slash TKIP and newer devices that support WPA2 CCMP. Also, WPA and WPA2 can be configured further with personal or enterprise mode. Personal mode uses pre-shared keys configured on the Orbit MCR and client devices. Enterprise supports EAP TLS-based authentication of client devices configured with certificates via RADIUS. By default, the unit is shipped with the Wi-Fi interface set as an access point in 802.11n mode. The Wi-Fi interface is also a member of the bridge interface, which is running a DHCP server serving out nine addresses. Any Wi-Fi client connected to the orbit that is set to DHCP client will receive an IP address from the orbit automatically. The default SSID used by the orbit takes the form of GEMDS underscore followed by the unit serial number. The default Wi-Fi password is GEMDS orbit all capitalized with an underscore in between GEMDS and ORBIT. Default security is WPA2 personal with encryption CCMP. The application that I will be setting up today demonstrates the ORBIT's ability to connect six clients via the Wi-Fi interface. Each PLC or RTU device is attached to the Ethernet or serial port of the ORBIT Wi-Fi client. The goal is for a user to obtain the analog and digital registers from each PLC via the Modbus protocol. It is assumed that the master polar will reside at the data center and has the ability to access the public internet. It is assumed that the Orbit MCR Wi-Fi access point has a SIM card that allows incoming data connections. The Orbit I will use for this demonstration uses a 4G SIM card on a private Verizon network. An overhead visual representation of this setup could be similar to this, where orbit units are deployed as field devices. Each station, represented by the blue Wi-Fi symbol, is associated to the access point, which is represented by the orange and blue Wi-Fi symbol. The access point is positioned optimally for solid signal strength on the Wi-Fi and cellular over-the-air connections. Remember, if operating in 802.11n mode outdoors, the approximate Wi-Fi range is 250 meters or 820 feet. If operating indoors, then it would be approximately 70 meters or 230 feet. If longer distances are required, we do offer the Orbit MCR 900 product, which has a range greater than 20 miles between connected units. Here is a list of steps that will be done to configure this setup. I'll walk through each of these independently and show the commands and configuration used at the command line, with some web settings as well. The end of step 10 will demonstrate the system is configured correctly by polling all endpoints simultaneously through the Verizon 4G cell network and over the Wi-Fi link. The first step is to configure the Orbit Wi-Fi client to be in station mode with the access point information. 
During this video, the left comms window will be my Wi-Fi access point, and the right comms window will be the Wi-Fi client. First thing to do is log into the access point as the admin user. Enter configuration mode and type the command show interfaces interface Wi-Fi. This displays the unit's Wi-Fi configuration. The SSID is listed after the letters AP. Copy that because we'll need it while configuring the Wi-Fi clients. Now log into the Wi-Fi client unit and enter configuration mode. The command used now will set up the Wi-Fi interface to operate in station mode, connecting to the SSID just copied from the access point. Fill in the rest of the security parameters as it matches your system. Issue a show command afterwards to verify the setup is as intended. Step 2 is to configure the Orbit Wi-Fi station IP address settings. First, delete the current bridge IP configuration with the delete command. Then issue the set command to configure the bridge interface to use DHCP. Step 3 is to configure the Orbit Wi-Fi bridge members, removing the access point from the bridge and adding station. Remove the access point from the bridge member list by using the delete command and then add the station in the bridge member list with the set command. This puts the Wi-Fi interface in station bridge mode. Step 4 is to disable the Orbit Wi-Fi client DHCP server. Do this by using a set command to set the Wi-Fi client DHCP server to enable false and then commit the configuration. Step 5 is to verify the units are associated. At the operational prompt in the Wi-Fi client, issue the command show interfaces state interface Wi-Fi. Look for the Wi-Fi status, station status, authenticated and authorized as being true. Then obtain your unit's IP address with the command show interfaces state interface IPv4. Look in the bridge section. The first address there is the IP address, while the entry under it is the ARP table. Run a ping from the access point to the station and verify connectivity over the Wi-Fi link. I repeat the ping in the opposite direction to confirm data passes both ways. Press Ctrl C to break out of the ping. Step 6 is to set up the Orbit Wi-Fi client terminal server mode. Enter configuration mode and enter the set command displayed to turn one of the serial ports into a terminal server. You may use the COM1, COM2, or the USB1 port as a terminal server. Choose this parameter as best fits into your system. This configuration will use COM1 and will be set to Modbus TCP mode, listening on port 502 using RTU mode. You may issue a show command to view the configured settings and when satisfied, type commit to apply the changes. At this point, the unit is now in terminal server mode. Disable terminal server mode by pressing the plus sign three times in half second intervals on your keyboard while connected to the COM port your terminal server is listening on. Step 7 is to repeat steps 1 through 6 for each Wi-Fi client that will be used in the system. Step 8 is to verify the access point has all Wi-Fi client units connected. To do this, make sure all Wi-Fi clients are powered on and configured correctly. Enter this command into the access point. As shown, there are six clients connected to the Wi-Fi access point. Displayed, you can see the RSSI, MAC, and some statistical values. Step 9 is to configure port forwarding rules on the Wi-Fi access point. I recommend using the access point web interface for this step as the port forwarding wizard is very intuitive and quick to configure. At the home screen, click on Wizards and then Port Forwarding. Click on Next, and then click Add to create a new rule set. Name your rule set without spaces, and click OK. Add a new rule, and configure the parameters as match your system. In my system, the destination IP will be the cell interface IP address, but each rule will have a different incoming port. When finished with an entry, you may add the remaining rules. There are six different rules in the system, each with a unique incoming port and forward to IP address. I have set all the terminal servers to listen on a port 502, therefore all rules will forward to port 502. 
If you require additional information on port forwarding, there is a dedicated training video that covers this feature in more detail. Click Next and select the rule set just created for the cell interface. Click Next and click Submit at the bottom of the summary page to apply all changes. Step 10 is to open the polling application and configure the appropriate settings. Then when finished, begin polling your system. Set up on the data center, I have six master pollers. I've configured the master's IP address to the orbit's access point cell IP and the IP port number to what was configured in the port forwarding rules as the incoming port. Each master polar will have a different IP port number. Starting up the polar, data begins to flow. Turning them all on simultaneously works as well, and my analog and digital values from my poll devices are displayed below and are updating accurately. Remember, if the Wi-Fi solution does not work well in your location, the Orbit MCR900 offers the wireless connection with longer range connectivity. I hope this video was helpful for you. For additional information, visit our website at www.gemds.com.